two, one. All right, we are already getting the party started. <laughs> we, we are having way too much fun in this place right here. And I am so excited. I have got Kelly Lane, my beautiful, amazing <laughs> woo -woo friend with me today. She is awesome. If you don't know Kelly, you've been missing out, baby, because she is a minister, an author, a speaker. And this woman knows how to fight the warrior way. Thank you, Kelly. I'm so glad you're here with me. I'm excited. <laughs> so excited. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We're going to make sure everyone is hearing this. They can see this. Let's make sure. Love, love, love. Is everyone good? Yes. Hello. Hey, warriors. Woo. Warriors awesome. Baby. All right. Make sure everyone can hear. Okay. Some people are not hearing. So let's just make sure that everyone is hearing over there. Okay. Turn up your volume. You should be hearing us. Y'all here? Everyone here? It looks, it looks like they can hear. Oh, some people can't hear. Hmm. Can we can't have that. I can hear and see. Okay, so hmm, maybe turn up your volume if you're having a problem hearing because it seems like most people are able to hear it. So awesome. Awesome. It says, yes, we can hear. Can't hear. We can hear. Um, can, Kelly, you talk and make sure everyone can hear you. Hey, y'all. Can y'all hear Testing, testing. No mic, but mic. <laughs> um, I think Brittany's trying to see if, if they if she can hear. Can you? Is it doing, it, Brittany? It's good. It's good. We got it. We've got it here. No mic. Okay. Oh yeah, it's great. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, Kelly. I need everyone who does not know you because these precious people have been missing out on such a light, on such a joy. Can you tell us? how you became a warrior because you are a woman. I have never seen someone who knows how to fight with the power of prayer. And if you're kind of like, oh, I don't really know how to talk to God. I really want to know how to operate in power. Here's your woman right here. So tell us about yourself, Kelly, how you're a warrior. <laughs> like I told you yesterday, I don't know how I got here. <laughs> All right. Bye. The end. I hope you enjoyed that. I just, it's like, Man, but honestly, I was just having a very hard life. Like, you know how when things don't go the way you plan. And yeah, I just got so desperate for God. You ever just been desperate? Like, Girl. It's like you don't deliver me out of this, then I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> and, and believe it or not, like years ago, I got on Google and I Googled, does God answer prayer? Like, I, I didn't, I mean, I know that he answers. I mean, that's what the Bible says. Yeah. But, you know, people still ask and wonder that all the time. And I Googled years ago, does God answer prayer? Or what do you do when God is silent? And that's how I ended up writing my first book, When God is Silent, off of that title, because he seemed so silent in my life a few years ago. Mm. And I just began to pray. Like, at first, I was praying a little cute prayers, you know, the little cute prayers. But after a while, I got so desperate that I began to really, really press and push in prayer. And so I got results. So it's just, it's just, it's been like a five year journey from where I started back when I was just in a place where I felt like God was silent and I answered my prayers to where I am now. That was in 2012 and this is 2017. Mm, mm. See, things sometimes take time. I want everyone to know that right now because God, he is the Lord of the harvest, but there's still a growing season. You got to be planting seeds. You got to be weeding. You got to be watering. You got to do all the care. And he is in charge of bringing it up in your life. And you're seeing that now, but we're also getting some comments where people are like, I, I kind of feel that way now and uh, feeling overwhelmed and desperate. And like you said, praying cute prayers. I want to talk about that. I was what is um, so desperate. Can you hear me? Make sure you can hear me before I say something. Bye. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I said, I was so desperate that I was actually even suicidal. Like, I was like, if God doesn't deliver me, I don't see any point in me. And I actually told God, you know, if you're going to have to deliver me and show me that you really are God, or I just I want to live in. And I was like, so here's my life. It's really messed up right now. I, I give it to you. If you do anything with it, you can have it. And it's like, I surrender. 
Um, but before, you know, like I, I didn't really pray much. Like I pray like maybe over my food, you know, or pray on Sundays, but I didn't have a prayer life. You know, there's a difference between praying casually and actually having a prayer life where you have prayer habits. Maybe uh-huh, we're talking uh-huh. about prayer habits too. But so in the beginning when I first started, I started getting up at midnight praying. Uh, I found it on the internet <laughs> that you can pray at midnight. I was like, oh, I'm desperate. That's cool. <laughs> and God's awake. I promise you. <laughs> And I started praying at midnight, and the first was because I was praying for a husband and, and twins at that time, uh, both of which God has given me, the husband and the Amen. Twins. And so He's faithful, and I just started off praying, you know, Father, you know, I take you to word, you know, so and so. But after a while, God, you promised me in your word, according to so and so, and I yes. started praying the word back. That's the key. Pray the word back to God, because His word would not go out and return void. I began to pray the word back, and I know that was the Holy Spirit guiding me to even teach me how to pray like that, because. God will teach us how to pray, you know, mm-hmm. to pray. And so I just started getting bolder with my prayers. I mean, you don't always have to be bold, but I was desperate. And so God says to come boldly before his throne. And so I just yeah. started oh, and reminding him of his promises to me. Well, he says, you can call me into remembrance of my word. Like we are allowed to come boldly before the throne. And Jesus is our advocate. He is sitting there saying, girl, I'll plead your case, but you've got to have a case to bring to me. And it's got to be founded in the word of God. And when you start speaking that word, it's like all the supernatural realm says, now she's ready. Like now it's time to go to work because she knows the truth and she is ready to fight. And that's why we have to read the word. Like I used to think it was boring. I used to try to read. Mm-hmm. I would just fall straight asleep. Like, yeah. like I just. And now that we study the Old Testament every day on my live videos with the Warriors, and we study the Old Testament, and it has become so exciting. It's, it is, I, uh, like last week, I asked my friends, I was like, I was like, where have you been all my life? I was talking to the Old Testament. I said, oh, I know, the devil told me I didn't need it, you know? Oh, <laughs> like, oh yeah. It is so relevant. You know, all of the Bible's yeah. relevant, but just, it's particularly the Old Testament, because a lot of people skip over it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and it's difficult to understand. And so I feel we've just been dissecting it a little bit each day. But just knowing the word, because when you know the word, you recognize, you know who you are in Christ and you, you know what you're entitled to. And so it gives you this strength and this boldness that otherwise you would not have because you're not reading your word. That's right. We've got to dig into the word because otherwise we're going into battle without a weapon because the sword of the spirit is how we fight. And, and I'm telling you, we got a bunch of butt naked believers out there where they're just like, you know, they don't, they don't know that they're entitled to that shield of faith. And they don't know they can wear the helmet of salvation. They don't know they can kick butt with the sword of the spirit. They're just running out. They got a helmet on, so they helmet of salvation and nothing else. And like, it's okay when you're two and you're running around after the bath and you're like got bubbles sticking to your butt or whatever. But come on, we are grown women in Christ. Like it is time for us to gird up and do battle because we already won. That's it. We're like I said, like we were talking a minute ago before we came on, that victim mentality. Because I had it for a long time, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, woe is me. But then I realized that I'm victorious. Like I can have what God says that I can have. Right. I'm going after it. I'm going right. after it. God has promised me. I want this life that He has promised me on this side. I don't have to wait to die. Mm-hmm. Uh, to have was mine. I want it right now. On yeah. earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> it takes us getting before God. It takes us getting serious about him and just praying. Because one thing about it, like disciples ask Jesus, teach me to pray. If you don't know what to pray or how to pray, that is one prayer I guarantee you God will gladly answer to teach me to pray. Teach right. Me to pray. And he sent his Holy Spirit to be our counselor. He's our teacher. Like I remember when I was first starting to dig into the word <laughs> And I would, I would just say, Jesus, I would just pretend like he's right there. And he would be like, his presence is right there. I'm like, just teach me, like, show me how to wield this weapon that I've got here, because I know that there's power in it. And I grew up kind of like you did, where the Bible was boring, church was boring, and there was no signs and wonders. There was no active power of God that was being demonstrated. So I'm like, Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of that thing you do on Sundays if you're a good person and all that kind of stuff. You do it out of tradition, but there's no transformation. Right. There was no transformation at all. And it wasn't until I was like, I was almost in my 40s when I started really digging into God's word and saying, I've had this all along. And I quit doing that. 
Dear Lord. Yes. Please do this for me. And please do this for me. And let me get out my list. Hold on, hold on, man. And please do this for me. And when God is saying, hold up, I've already done it. Now get busy and start doing the manifestation according to my word. Yes, that's it. And uh, another thing I started doing, so along this journey, I already had God had given me the hug twins. And a year and a half ago, I started getting up at, I started off at five o'clock in the morning. Like I just started seeking God first for real. Like I yeah. wanted my life to change so bad. And I was like, I'm just going to give you the first part of my day. That's how I got to this point of doing the Facebook Live every day for your nation. Um, just getting up by myself. I did two things. I started making my bed every morning, no matter what. Same simple, but that alone can transform your life, making up your bed. Amen. Break totally, bed. totally. It's crazy, but it's true. And then I started praying and getting up every morning going before the Father. And I did that. It's been... Well, it was last January. I started last January of 2016. And I look at where God has brought me then, uh, praying by myself, praying in my closet by myself, being alone with God. So how he's given me this platform to usher other people into the same thing. But I wanted him to develop my prayer habits. And that's what God was doing. That's what he's doing. You have to have prayer habits. Um, you have to be mm -hmm. consistent. Daniel prayed three times a day. Like he was consistent. I feel like yes. I it's a special routine for how everybody is individualized. But I think we need to be consistent. Mm, yes, absolutely. And I want to go back to something you said. That was years ago. And God cannot exalt you in public until you're proven in private, until you've got that audience. He's not going to give you an audience of millions until you can have an audience with the Holy Spirit and get real and be able to humble yourself so he can exalt you. Oh, but that means getting into the word, digging into the word. You don't understand it. Go before God. Don't You don't, you don't need to search. You have him right there, and he will tell you, and he will explain it. He'll make it clear to you. Yes. We just talked about that this morning. God will lift the God will do the he exhaust the humble, and those who exalt themselves will be humbled. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, like it's timing. It's a lot about timing. It's like staying in position, staying faithful, and just waiting on God to lift you and bless you and answer your prayers because he's going to answer in a way that's going to bring the most glory to him. Right, he, right. You know, I well, you know what's... I got to tell you something funny today. I was talking with this woman and I mean, you know, I, I, we're, we're cut from the same cloth. We're going to put God into every conversation. It's, it's so funny. My kids love to like stand back. I've got, I've got seven kids and they love to stand back and, and watch when I run across someone in public. They're like, watch, 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 watch. Cause they know it's like, okay, how's she going to bring Jesus into it? You know, she's going to bring Jesus. And I was talking to this woman about uh, like, I don't know, fixing something on our roof or something like that. And of course, you know, I'm like, well, you know, the, God, you know, started on my God talking. And she said, well, yeah, you know, sometimes he brings us joy and sometimes sadness. I'm like, no, 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 no. no. Well, we can talk about that if you want to talk about that. But no, because all good gifts come to us from the father. And the enemy wants you to think that whatever you're going through right now, a hardship he will put the hardship on you and then he'll whisper in your ear, if God loves you, why would he do something like that? Mm, mm, he's a liar. That's the only native tongue he can speak his lies. That's right. And speaking of that, you know, in this journey, in this five year journey, both, I, both of my parents have gone home to be the Lord. My wow. mom went first and then two years later, my father. And it's like, I can look at that like, God, how could you? But I have to be honest, that is what catapulted me into where I am now. That pain pushed me into my purpose. There's always a purpose in the pain. Always. There is. Always. And you know what? But but God also, he gives so much grace. Like when you're in the middle of the pain, you feel this strength that you can't even explain where it's coming from. This peace that is supernatural. It, it, it goes beyond all understanding. And so don't. I feel like sometimes I think we need to talk about this right now because someone right now is feeling like their life is just kind of a roll of the dice. Like, you know, sometimes you're lucky. Sometimes you're unlucky. Sometimes good things happen. Sometimes bad things happen. I want you to know that God has a covenant over you to bless you, to, to prosper you, to bring you into high places. He is not, he, he's not like a, a God of luck or chance. He's got a blood bought covenant 
for you. And he wants you to completely yield to him and trust him because his love is so strong for you. Yes. That's so true. And it's so true. I mean, you know that from everything you've gone through. You can look back and say, you know what? God had something greater and he brought me to it. Yes. And um, A.Z. Tozer, in one of his books, Knowing God, I believe it's the name of it. He says, a man will never be higher than God. You will never be higher than how you perceive God. So how we perceive God is very critical. It's very important for how we operate, for how it affects our prayer lives, it affects our daily lives. It's how do we perceive God. That's why we have to know God for ourselves, our word and study, who he is, his attributes, his essence. His... But when we're praying, we know that God is life, right? We know that he's not evil. We know that he's just. He's faithful. So when we're praying, those things like, you know, roll the dice type of mentality, well, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. No, God cannot be anything other than good. Yes. That's who he is. And so regardless of what happens, like, God, you feel good. So, you know, even though I don't understand right now, this is working for my good because you cannot be anything other than good. That's and right. You realize that, and you realize who you're actually praying to and who our father is, it really will change your the way you speak and the way you pray because you realize, no, God is cannot other than who he is it would be outside of his name possible and he said he cannot alter a thing that comes out of his mouth so his word is good and his word is so faithful you can trust that and one thing kelly when you start really studying the nature of god and the attributes of god you all of a sudden realize that you're cut from the same DNA. Like that spirit that rose Jesus out of that tomb is alive in you. And what God can do, he's gifted you to do. And all of a sudden, you know that you are truly unlimited because the spirit of the risen Christ is in you. And greater is he who is in you than anything this world can come at you with. And when you know that, when you know who you are, when you know who your God is, you can stand firm against any storm grounded and rooted and stable. That is so true. It is so, like, for instance, you know, I battled for a long time with identity issues and what how other people perceive me, right? And yeah. now like, somebody's critical or has something to say, do you know it doesn't even phase me? Because I know who I am in Christ. It's like your opinion of me, it really doesn't matter a whole lot because I know who I am in Christ. And this it's so liberating because I struggle with always trying to fit in and trying to belong or trying to be accepted. And then to realize only to realize that God loves me, that God accepts me and that you can never like please everybody. Somebody's going to always have something to say, but who we aim to please is our father in heaven. As long as we do what we're supposed to do and, you know, be holy as he is holy, trying to be accepted by man. We're not going to get, somebody's going to always have something to say. Always. Always. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we cannot. And, and you know what? To, to please people, that's so that goes against what God wants for you, because we're not we're not to be subject to man. We are to be subject to God. And when we know that God has already given us his approval, he's already given us that stamp and said, girl, you're good. You're pure. You're the righteousness of, of in Jesus. You are my righteousness. When he's given you that stamp, then the world can come at you. But you can say, oh, I, I know who I am. Thank you, Lord. And when you know who you are, and the world will always come, come at you. But Satan is not after your money or your time or your kids or your family. He's after that covenant of blessing that God has placed on you. And he knows he can't get it. And he sure doesn't want you to know what you got. Because if he can keep you deceived then you won't reach for that sword. You won't stand for him. You won't start speaking out God's promises over your life. He's just got a bluff game. He's like, he's holding cards, but he ain't got nothing. (laughs) That's right. That's why we need to learn the armor of God. That's one thing I I made it my business to do. We pray it every day with the warrior nation. We pray that every day prayer we pray. We we put on the armor of God, like you said, because otherwise you don't even, you go out, we say naked. You just (laughs) butt naked Christian. Butt naked. Anybody that's listening, I encourage you to memorize the armor of God to, so that you can pray that back. You know, before I walk out of this house today, I'm armored up with the better truth around my ways, the hymn of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, sounds of peace. There may be crazies before I got there, but once I get there, there shall be peace in the name of Jesus. You know, <laughs> that armor, and so many years, I was like, armor of God? What is that exactly? What is the armor? <laughs> you know, we have to be armored up. But these are the things that we don't learn because we don't read. We learn it gives us authority, power, and protection. 
Yes, it does. And and we are protected by the blood of Jesus. We are guarded. I like to consider it like that. Um, it says his love surrounds us like a shield. His his favor surrounds us like a shield. Like he, it's impenetrable. He has got you. But if you don't know what you got, you're going to go out naked. Like, and, and it's all in the word. The helmet of salvation. How do we know who we are? How do we know we're saved? By his word. Blessed, breastplate of righteousness. How do we know that we're the righteousness? Because of his word. And and the shoes fitted for the gospel of peace. The gospel is in his word. And that belt of truth, the truth is his word. And the sword is just straight up the word. Like, you, that's what you do battle with. <laughs> straight up. And it is all in there and you can't go out without it because, and, and you know what's awesome? He doesn't give us armor for our back because he's got our back. Amen. Amen. Mm. A to the man. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, how does, okay, so we're getting um, a lot of comments. Praise God. I am so grateful for every single person who is tuned in and who is learning and who is ready to rise up as a warrior. And some people are saying, you know, I'm going through that, that period. Like I want to be able to operate in power and I want to be able to pray like that. And we are going to pray in a few minutes. We're going to pray over everyone who is tuning in and everyone who's going to see this afterwards as a replay. And we're going to cover you, but um, how can we get plugged in Kelly? Because we all go through desperate times. I mean, I, Went through my fair share of, of desperate times. You know, there was, we were going to be foreclosed on. We didn't have any money. There was a time I couldn't feed my kids. I, I It was just like, you know, and, and Satan kept on attacking until I realized, wait, I have the upper hand here. Yes. One thing I recommend, <clears throat> writing my book when God is silent, and just trying to get clarity um, about God answering prayers, I began to look up every scripture that was, on God answering and and I began to look right I wrote those down and I began to pray and back to God yeah so for somebody who's not familiar with the word whatever your situation is you can always look at these days you can search it mm-hmm. and start praying that back but, you know more than anything de- develop a set aside time even if you don't know what to say right just get in his presence turn some music on something with God some, some worship music or something and just sit and God speaks to you. He will. Yeah. And sometimes that's all you can do. I got to tell you what happened to me today. And I put it on my Facebook feed. I made a video about it. But, oh, it's one of those times, Kelly, when um, you ha- you're you just listening to your circumstances, this freaking you out. And that Virginia heat, can I just say it was like at least 320 degrees. I don't know what it was, but it was hot. The air conditioner busted in the car. I've got 30 minutes to go. I'm driving like this, pitting out, sweat dripping down, you know. And I was like, oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, I was doing all things work together. That air conditioner wasn't changing. So all I could do was just, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Sweat dripping down my back, collecting around my waistband where the muffin top is going. I mean, it was a mess. All I could do was praise. All I could do. You got that sweat all in your belly. Oh, it was not good. But sometimes there are circumstances that just want you, just bombard you. And all you can do is praise. Praise your way out of it. That's it. That's it. Praise him in the fire. <laughs> it was fire. It was sweat and fire. And be glad you're there. And I'm here because you can still smell it probably. I don't know. I feel it. <laughs> But that's it. Praise him anyhow. I said that this morning. Praise him anyhow. Like, yeah. like whether it's bad, happy or sad. Praise. And so I just make it a habit. God, you're good. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, I bless your name. No matter what's going on, I magnify you. I exalt you. I know that you're making a way out of no way. I thank you. I trust you. I take you at your word. You're faithful. You're good. You can't be anything but good. And, you know, yeah. the more you tell your daddy that, mm. today because even as earthly parents, if my kids just came here, my little twins, Oh, mom, you're so perfect. I just love, they tell me, I love you, mom. I don't care how bad they've been that day. When they tell me, I love you, mom, I say, oh, I love you. It just does something to me. Mm-hmm. Imagine mm-hmm. what it does to our father, yeah. who is love. Yes. Love you. Like, things may not be going the way I want them to go right now. But I just want to, I don't, I'm not even going to ask for anything right now. I just want to say that I love you. Right. I love, you know, I want a relationship with you. Just be honest. Just like you're talking to a friend. 
and say, you know what? I want to know you better. I don't know how, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know how to do that. Will you please help me? And trust me, God will do it. He loves to respond. He loves it. He is love. And you're just exonerating his character. And it's, it is so beautiful when you can just start to seek his face and not his hand. Yes, he gives us all good things. And he, and he always supplies our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And he gives us the desires of our heart. And we do not want and we do not need. But when you can just go and just, just bless him. And just praise him and just be in his presence. And seriously, Kelly, you, you're so right because there are no perfect words. I remember when I grew up in church, I thought I had to be like, Dear thou most glorious heavenly father above all, we beseech thee for all good and mighty thou hast given. I didn't know. I didn't know how to pray. But when you can just say, God, I love you. Yeah, I just so love so you. That's so awesome. Mm. You're so good. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. So we don't have to do things perfectly. Yeah. It's all a process. And he is the one perfecting us. So don't get stuck in that. And just know that he does want to bless you. And he does love you. And he's not holding judgment over you. Someone who is listening right now feels like, feels condemnation right now. They feel guilt and they feel shame and they feel like God just cannot look upon them because of the badge of sin and shame that they're wearing. I want to tell you right now that he sees you as pure and holy and perfect because he sees the blood of his son that has washed all of that sin away. You need to forgive yourself. You need to move past it. Don't, don't let Satan whisper lies into your ear that God is judging you. He poured out all that judgment on his son. There's none left for you, baby. You're free and you are loved and you are pure in his sight. So let that go. I don't know who it's for, but someone needed to let that go and know that there's nothing. God doesn't remember that sin. So you need to let it go and know who you are in Christ. That's right. That's exactly why. And another thing, don't compare your life or your prayer life or your relationship with God to someone else's. Like, I want to pray like you pray. Well, no, I mean, we're all different. Everybody's relationship with God is different. It's not wrong. It's different. And we can get caught up in comparing or looking into someone else's life from the outside, you know, and become frustrated or feel less than. But that's not a true depiction, you know, what you see of someone else. We need to have our own personal relationship with God and everybody's going to be different. Yeah, everyone. Because think about all your kids, Kelly. You know, I mean, there's not one like the other. I have seven kids and they are so dramatically different that I don't know how they all came out of this womb. I, I'm like, what? I don't know. I don't know sometimes. My twin, one likes peanut butter, one likes jelly. One likes uh, the, the chicken sandwich, one likes the french fries. They literally, like if I get one meal, one one eats this and one they're like so different and they're twins so it's like nobody's the same it's just so funny how even peanut butter and jelly ever yeah. sound like I haven't but one of them peanut butter sounds the other one's the jelly sound it's like we're different we're different yeah all different and we all have different characteristics of God that's the awesome thing like in and when we are trying to be someone else we are being a cheap imitation of that person when we could be an amazing masterpiece of what God already breathes into us. He breathed into you a dream, a vision, an anointing to do a specific purpose on this earth. And when you're spending time trying to model other people and compare yourself with other people, you're missing out on the glory that comes with just letting his power pour through you and you be you. Do you, baby? That's do you. Do you. That's exactly right. That's right. That's right. Exactly right. Well, I know that we've been, I can't believe we've already been talking for like 30 minutes. I feel like it's been, uh, this is, we could go for like three more hours. I know we could, but, but I want to just lift up these amazing people that God has drawn into this time right now with us. And Kelly, I would, I would love to ask you if you would just pray over these amazing warriors and let's gird up and let's get our armor on and let's stop being naked and get ready to fight. Yes, yes. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for every warrior 
whether they know it or not, God, every warrior who has joined in this evening with us, Father, we thank you for the blessings that you have just for them. We thank you, God, for who you created them to be unique and perfect in you. Father, for every dream and vision that is represented tonight, God, we thank you that you will give them direction and clarity on how those dreams are to come to pass. Anyone dealing with guilt or shame tonight, Father, we know according to your word, there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are Jesus Christ. So God, we thank you that tonight we are free, free from guilt, free from shame, free from depression. Uh, we come against suicidal thoughts tonight, feelings of being less than. We come against those things tonight with the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Stir us up in your words tonight, God. Give us a fresh hunger and thirst for you and for what is right. God, you're good. You're faithful. You're perfect, God, in all your ways. And God, we just love on you tonight. Just say it tonight to God. Say, God, I love you. Father, we love you. We just take this time love to just love on you, to bask in your presence. Father, help us to develop prayer habits. Speak to every son and daughter tonight and let them know when you want them to get up and what you will have them to do. There's no set way. We know that each way is individualized. But God, tonight, we thank you that even now you are speaking to your children tonight, God. We will do as you have instructed. Father, each day here on out, we will armor up. We will get into the study of your word and we will learn what the full armor of God is, which is the belt of truth around our ways, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. Father, we were sandals of peace. We carry that shield of faith because nothing is too hard for you and nothing is impossible for you, God. We believe in the things that we cannot see. We trust what you have said you will bring to pass. And Lord, we carry this sword of the spirit, which is your word. We are armed and dangerous in your word father let your word be hidden in our hearts that we will not sin against you god tonight even the secret petition of the hearts that are represented here tonight we trust god that you're answering in a way that will bring the most glory and honor to your name bless our time god uh, as we go out this evening and do whatever else there is to do tonight god be with us and protect us lord and like i said just just bring us into a place where we're so hungry and thirsty for you yes and what is right speak to us in your word father we bless you. We thank you for this time. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Kelly, thank you so much, girl. You are a warrior. Oh, I, I need to tell all the warriors. I forgot my daughter who helps me with all of my businessy stuff. She set up a site just for your warriors that they can go and get my book, a set of cards, a post. I was just like, throw it in there. Throw it in there. Put it in there. So if they go to hannahelpme.com forward slash Kelly, then they will get that. So um, that book sells on Amazon, but I'll, I've never done this ever. And I don't want to give that to your warriors. So I want, I don't, I think I can write right here. Let me see. I'm, I haven't done this before, so I don't know. Will it work? That's so cool. Oh, that's so that's, look at it. That's so cool. <laughs> I didn't even know I could do that. That's awesome. Anna, you have to tell them this before we go. Our yeah. conversation about our talk show and about Steve Harvey, because when the Warriors hear what you say, they're going to be like, oh, my God. Okay. All right. So, Warriors, this is so funny. So, Kelly and I, first of all, we start talking to each other like, you know, we went to kindergarten together and grew up together, and it was crazy, crazy. So we knew immediately, all right, we're sisters. Like, you know, don't let the color fool you, but we are sisters. And and we were talking about, I, I sent her this, <laughs> we were talking about how we're going to have a talk show together. We're going to have a show that is not boring. It brings God's power and it's fun. Like it's exciting. And so I sent her a gift of Steve Harvey going. <laughs> and, she, <laughs> and I, and I said, by the way, we're also going to be on Steve Harvey. And she's like, no way. I already bought my shoes for him. <laughs> and I already picked out my outfit. So, hey, I'm just saying. We're going. And we we're going. Be I hope Steve Harvey better watch out because we might just take over that show. <laughs> we'll have a baptism. They'll be coming down the aisle. We're saying, let's go. It's prayer time, people. Come on, all the prayer warriors. And we'll have all of your warriors like there and, and they're going to be in the audience and we're just going to have revival. It's going to be written in history books. Revival yeah. in 2017, no, 2018, whenever, God, you know, started on the Steve Harvey show. <laughs> yes. There's going to be footage all over. Massive baptisms. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. That is so funny. And we'll have a close up on Kelly's shoes. Oh, yes. We're going to talk about it. I didn't show them what kind. I just said, I have the shoes. I have them wrapped in one of my miracle t shirts um, because I'm believing God for a miracle. And I said, and when we get that call, I'm, you're going to see my shoes because I'm going to cross my legs on the show and you're going to know that those are the shoes. That's right. <laughs> Those, <laughs> I'm so excited. That's wonderful. So I'm so happy everyone tuned in. I'm so happy we could have this time together. And also they're going to see us on Steve Harvey anyway. So <laughs> praise God. Thank you so much, Kelly. I love you. I love Warrior Nation. I love you guys so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>